68 Playmate. It's 1995, and I'm perched on the edge of my bed, a lumpy mattress on the floor of a tiny two-room apartment. I graduated college a few years ago and hung around to play in a rock band. I play rhythm guitar, basically the least necessary component in the group, only recently learning to sing a few sour, yelpy backups. I'm 24 and a classically blocked artist. It's alumni weekend. When confronted with the question, what do you do? I like to joke that I'm the least ambitious person on the planet. My band is spinning its wheels in bars. We drive 75 minutes to Austin every Wednesday to play inappropriately loud to a mostly empty vomitorium called the Blind Pig. We make $40. It costs that much in gas to drive the van to and fro. Chris is here with me now, back for alumni festivities. He's got Superman good looks, square jaw, handsome eyes. As long as I've known him, he's been in a wheelchair, a motorized scooter, insultingly called a lark. I know that navigating the steep hills of the quarry our college was built upon was no lark for Chris. He has some form of degenerative muscular disease. Our friendship never went that deep and I never asked, so his disease sits there between us unnamed. I am fantastically able-bodied and have thick, long, blonde hair. I have no idea how good looking I am. Chris got the girl. He's already in law school. I'm sleeping on, the mattre on a mattress on the floor on top of peeling linoleum, Marshall half stack in the way of the door to the bathroom. He's engaged to Catherine. Freshman year, she lived two floors above me. She was blonde, sultry, confident. She seemed older than the rest of us. She didn't walk, she unfurled. All of the boys on my floor vied for her attention. I tried poetry, songs, tight pants. Of course, women smelled desperation. Of course, I was beat out by my friend in the wheelchair. Chris was always cooler than the rest of us. Sophomore year, he brought the flaming lips to town. He talked about how he was friends with Wayne, the singer, how he knew all the bands from OKC. I thought he was full of shit. Surprise, all true. The next year, he'd have my band open for the Chainsaw Kittens, another Lips-esque OKC band with glam, proto-trans singer, and hookier songs than we could ever come up with. Their singer had style. I looked like I shopped at the Gap. We talk about old friends, about Catherine, about future plans. Somehow, predictably, I end up with the guitar in my hands. We decide to make up a song. I had about half a page of lyrics about an old Playboy magazine that I had in my stash of filth. I have a long-standing on-off relationship to pornography, basically binge and revulsion, repeat. Buy a stash of dirty magazines, I hide them under my bed. I hide them as an alcoholic hides bottles and little hidey holes for emergencies. I use them too much till I feel repulsed. I toss an orgy of mags and videotapes into the trash and feel lighter for a week or so. Then I find myself, young pervy man with sunglasses on, at the convenience store in non-peak hours, mustering up the confidence to take some really filthy, embarrassing, raunchy stuff up to the register, hand it to the middle-aged woman whose face tightens as I count my change. It's a mortifying cycle, a fine cocktail of self-loathing and public shame. This goes back longer than I care to admit. In first grade, I'm led by Johnny Starsky, the fifth grader across the street, to the woods astride his house, he pushes me up to a stack of Playboys, bundled with twine, laughs at me, says, What, you never had any pussy, Eric? I'm stricken. The pages have been in the rain. They are crinkly, and the colors have run, imbuing the naked women with psychedelic auras of red and blue and yellow ink. My face burns. But I feel power in this first primal glimpse. Later, I return alone with child scissors to cut out a few pages of very beautiful very naked women, to hide in my first stash. I build a robot out of cardboard and shove the women into his mouth. 
Chris has very little motility with his hands, has lots of trouble cording a guitar, so I give him a few pots and pans and two wooden spoons, a little rascal's drum kit. I play three chords, the best ones, E, A, and D. The same chords as Van Morrison's Gloria, the same chords as the Flaming Lips, do you realize? These chords are the foundation of the universe, or at least they can be, in my memory of that fine, dry, sunny October day. It didn't actually, but I remember the room pulsing. A a snapshot for you. Two old friends in a squalid apartment. The one in a wheelchair, pounding on pots and pans. Pages and pages of lyrics pouring from the one with the guitar. My whole squalid relationship to women, to masturbation, to airbrushed images of sexual failure coming out in a flood. Maybe, for once, finally, I was unblocked.
twiggy where oh where where could she be is she a hula hoop and down to a psychedelic bee if i get my math right i add it up i count it back one 